What's going on everybody and welcome back to Frankie's Aquatics right here on the wonderful platform that is YouTube. I hope you've had a fantastic week. Thankfully here in the UK the weather has slightly dropped in temperature. The sun is still shining on most days but thankfully it's not where it's trying to cook us. It's not that horrible heat that's going to smother us. It's quite a nice tepid heat and thankfully it doesn't require me to do a bazillion water changes a day. So it's been a very very good week for me indeed. I hope you've had a fantastic week too. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys have been up to and I'll get back to you all as soon as I can. Now this week's video, we're going to look at little things and little tips that we're going to need. Things that are very easily forgot that we're absolutely going to need to help look after our axolotls. There's a lot to the hobby and you learn a lot as you go, but these things will hopefully give you guys a little bit of a shortcut on the little tips and tricks and the things that you will need to better look after your axolotl. It's because if you've not noticed the angle's a little bit different, you can kind of see me at the side there, but that's a bit wicked. Hello. I've got a, I'm on a really, really squeaky floorboard lot. Can you hear it? I don't even know if it picks up that loud on the camera, but it's annoying. It's really annoying. So I thought if I stand really still, then it won't creak nearly as much. At least that's the understanding anyway. So without further ado, let's get cracking with this week's video. Come on, let's go. So the first item is a fairly obvious item, but it's one that everyone tries to forget that they actually need. You're going to need yourself a water test kit. These things are like your little science kit and everybody, this is the brand in particular that I use, not sponsored in any way, shape or form. This is the API Freshwater Master Test Kit. It's the one I've used for everything that I've kept for many, many years. And it's by far, in my opinion, the best on the market right now. It's not the cheapest by any stretch, but it does everything that you need it to do. So your pH, your ammonia, your nitrite, and your nitrate can all be kept and monitored with one of these. And believe me, it is actually quite fun when you get the hang of it. So don't be tempted to cut any corners. You will absolutely need one of these. Obviously, you don't have to buy this particular brand. There are various different brands available, but this is the one that I recommend. There is test strips that are made by API as well. Um, I don't really have much experience with those. I think I used them once on a temporary basis while I was waiting for one of these to arrive. And they give okay readings. They're not, they're not the best for being most accurate. So that's why you'll do a lot better with a water test kit. So yes, definitely invest in one of these. I keep doing that a lot, don't I? I'd be really good at puppeteering art, wouldn't I? I'd be really good at it a lot. We, we, we're so in sync with each other. <laughs> now, obviously you need one of these to make sure that your water is good and your tank is actually cycled. There's no real way of testing your water or having any kind of understanding of your water and it's parameters if you haven't got one of these or something similar. Um, it's just playing the guessing game. So please don't ever cut corners. Always invest in a water test kit. It might be a little bit, a little bit daunting to begin with, but I can absolutely assure you it'll, it'll be very much worth the investment because you'll be an absolute little scientist in no time. So make sure you get yourself one of those. Next product is a water conditioner. It might seem like a really obvious one yet again, but this is something that people say, oh, you know what, I've been doing it for years. I've never used any kind of conditioner. I don't need to use a conditioner. And I say to people, that's like driving a racing car without your seatbelt on and never crashing and just going, ah, I'm all right, I've been doing it for years. Why well, take the risk? It's um, fairly inexpensive. It'll make sure your water takes out any of the nasties that live within your water straight from your tap or bottled water for that matter. So any kind of, it removes chlorine, chloramine, it removes all the nasty stuff that hides in there that can cause upset to your axolotl or any other fish for that matter. So make sure, I'd, again, not sponsored by any products here at all, but this is the one that I use. It's the Seachem Prime. It's just one that you can trust. I know people are going to be going, it's not Seachem, it's Seachem, but I call it Seachem, and that's the end of that. <laughs> so this is the one that I use personally. Really good stuff. It absolutely stinks like the dog's trumped. It's just rotten. It really, 
Oh, it really is rotten. Is there's no there's no there's no avoiding how bad that stinks. <coughs> Not even joking. It's rotten, but it's really good, and you don't need to use a lot of it either. So a big bottle like this, which is um, whew, my eyes are still watering. So a big bottle like this will last you a long time if you haven't got a collection of axolotls. And even if you have, much like myself, it still lasts reasonably long. Not quite as long as I'd like it to for the price but it's not bad, so make sure you invest in some sort of water conditioner. Now the next product is gonna feel like a really obvious one. We're gonna state it anyway, because not a lot of people decide to use these, but you're gonna need a good feeding pellet. Now obviously axolotls enjoy bloodworm, and they also like earthworms or night crawlers, but all they're not always gonna be available, and there's gonna be quiet spots throughout the year where you're gonna struggle to maybe get them. So it's really good to invest in a really good, high quality, high protein feeding pellet. Now these are, I buy these locally from a company who provides food for farms and zoos and rescue centres and stuff like that. So it's a locally sourced pellet. Now, the only reason I use this particular pellet, which smells like gravy granules, it's lovely. The only reason I use this particular pellet is because it is cost effective. I have a lot of mouths to feed and to feed other products that are on the market, it just doesn't warrant the price tag. These are just the same in quality. I just buy them in huge quantities, but make sure you invest in a very good feeding pellet. The ones I recommend to everybody are Arcadia and Fibby Golds. They're fantastic. There's not very many axolotls out there that don't like those. They're a little bit tricky to source though, depending on where you are in the world. And there's also NT Labs feeding pellets, axolotl feeding pellets. I did a little bit of a collaboration with them a few videos ago, and I've got to say the products are holding up. They're doing great, and my axolotls really enjoy them too. So make sure you invest in a nice little feeding pellet. Just for those rainy days when you haven't got worms and bloodworms to hand, the feeding pellet will be your saviour. It'll be like Superman flying in. Fantastic stuff. Now the next one it's good to have on hand, it's a bit like having a first aid kit, it's medications. So things like this, I always recommend this to people as well, it's API Melafix. It's a really good product, a little bit pricey if I'm completely honest for what it is. It's basically an extract from tea, so it's tea extract, it's really good. Um, this bottle here just costs just less than £10 here in the UK, so it is a little bit expensive, but it's really good for bacterial infections or any kind of blemishes or gill or fungus issues. It's the kind of thing that I hope to never have to use, but I always have it about. You'll always see it around, just in case I do need it. You'll probably see, I don't think I've even used that one yet. I'm pretty sure it's a brand new bottle. So it's really good to have, really handy to have. Now, people do use other things than this. Usually, if you catch a fungus or a scrape or anything like that soon enough, a nice balanced water change will absolutely help correct it. So you won't need to jump straight for the medications. Don't be too hasty in going straight in for a medicated route. Do try nice cold dechlorinated water because that will usually clear up anything like fungus, um, any kind of scrapes or nips or anything like that, that will eventually heal with good water. It's about keeping your water right. But people do like to use products like this, so this is the one that I personally recommend. Again, it's API Melifix. You'd think so, sponsored by these, wouldn't you? But they are a good brand, to be fair. So there's these, and people also use things like salt. I have a tub of salt. I've never, ever once had to use this for any axolotls. The reason I don't use salt is I know many people do, and I'm not popping off at people that do, but I personally don't because I think it's a little bit too harsh. I think it's a very unforgiving treatment. It's salt at the end of the day. Um, Axolotls are very absorbent. They absorb things. I don't think it's greatly good for them to absorb too much salt extract. So I do. I would use this if I needed to, if an, if an infection was out of control and um, I felt it was the only option that I currently had. But if I'm perfectly honest, I'd always go for that over this. Just personal preference. I'm not having a go if you've used this. Good on you. But again, I personally just use a medication rather than this. You can also do tea bass, which is very similar to this, but on a weaker scale. Because again, this is extracted, this is tea extract. It's technically what it is, it's an it's a antibacterial treatment. And very much tea bass do work in a very similar fashion, but on a more, a more lower, low-key scale. So whatever you do, just make sure you've got something in to hit if those rainy days ever do come, such as funguses and stuff like that. Make sure you've got things on hand that'll obviously help you care for your axolotl. The last thing you want to happen is you wake up one morning to notice a fungus and you haven't got anything like this at hand if it got really out of control. Always keep them in. It's a bit like us having a, medi a medical kit or what's the word? First aid kit, not a medical kit. I'm not in Tomb Raider. It's always good to have the tools that you'll need at hand. So do keep an eye out and have these in at all times. I've got a few extra things that I just added in there 
just to kind of have that make things a little bit easier for the keeper. Um, they're not essentials by any stretch, but the things that I use on a daily basis that I find that help me in keeping my axolotls happy and healthy. So we're gonna quickly do a quick fire round. Not gonna talk too much about the products. So without further ado, let's take a little look at those two. Might seem really obvious, but you're gonna need a towel or two. You're definitely gonna need a towel. Um, as you know, you're messing around with water day in, day out, you're gonna make some spills. Done my fair share of them over the time. And towels are the best friend that you could have in regards to quickly wiping up the mess so the missus don't see. It's a great little tool to have. So make sure you have plenty of towels on hand. I have a collection of towels that I constantly rotate because as you can imagine, a little bit of a spillage, you pop it on, you dry it off, and it soon begins to stink. So make sure you've got plenty of towels at hand because they will come in handy. Another one that I always recommend is a turkey baster. Um, mine's a bit wonky for some reason. Um, oh. <laughs> okay, um, try and just, turkey baster, let me just try and fix this. Turkey baster, there we go. So you're gonna need a turkey baster. Now, you don't obviously need a turkey baster, but these are really good. If you see any unspotted food that's not been eaten, you can obviously quickly go at bobbin. You can remove it nice and quickly without causing a scene. You can also clean up any poop as and when you see it, so your ammonia doesn't spike out of the window. And for some reason, it's got really bright over here all of a sudden. It's like glaring in my eyes over here. What's going on? Sunshine be gone. Yes, a turkey baster will be like a lightsaber to one of those Jedis in Star Wars. Vroom, vroom. It's an absolute blessing. So make sure they're very inexpensive, but for some reason in the UK, they went a little bit scarce for a while, or at least they did in Derby where I'm from. Couldn't get hold of them. So every time I see a turkey base, I have habit, I buy them. I'm like, I love them all. <laughs> I just buy the lot. So if I'm contributing to the problem, I apologize, but do get yourself a turkey base. The next product is one of these, which is quite simply a rolling bin. Um, you actually don't need one of these for any reason whatsoever in regards to look after an axolotl. I just need one to keep the internet trolls in check. <laughs> the next products are cleaning equipment. So these are really handy. These are obviously designed to wash your pots with. Um, obviously I don't put soap in the handle. It's so like a little dispenser where you can pop some soap. I just use it as a scouring brush and it's really good for getting in those little places that you can't get quite easy with a sponge. So um, for example, if you get any algae buildup, that's great for that. And it helps keep your aquariums in check and helps them looking brand new all the time. You can also use one of these. You don't know if you know what one of these are. Um, there's two reasons for this. And I learned that the new reason for myself the other day. But let me explain. So you've got this side, so this does actually rotate and there's a razor blade in there. And I use that to scrape the algae off the glass or as the, as the Americans like to call it, algae. Um, really little clever design, really good. I also use that to remove the, the paint off the back of my tanks recently. I used the razor blade on that for that purpose too. Re you can still see there's a bit of blue in there, look. Really good, really good thing. But again, not essential, but it will definitely help you out in regards to keeping the algae at bay. Now, this side of it is actually a very clever little technique. So that's got a little like, hook on it there, look. You see it, it's a little hook. And I, learnt, I recently learned that that's actually to help embed your plants. So if you use live plants, what you can do is you can pop them into your substrate and you can actually use that to push the roots in with and kind of bed it in a little bit better without you getting your fingers involved. So it's a really clever design and I didn't know that myself until just recently. And I've got to, be, I've got to say, it's coming really handy ever since I've learned that. So yeah, that's another little design that you can use. Very, very helpful, very inexpensive, and it will save you quite a bit of time in the process too, and a lot less elbow grease. And the last product kind of ties into the first product. I was recently, um, I recently reached out to a company who do 3D prints, who make all different array of different things. And the guy's called Sam, he's called Sam 3D. Sam 3D. Um, and he politely sent me this for an honest review and I've used it a couple of times and I must say it's brilliant. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. So this little device here is designed for your test tubes from your water test kit. It's all labelled, I don't know if you can see it, all labelled on what, what stands where. And they're a really nice fit, it's really good and I must say it makes my life a lot easier. Because with the test kits, with the test kits you get these little tubes which are great but they don't come with any kind of stand to pop them in. So when, you, when you're doing as many as I am, you're forever misplacing these or even worse standing on them and they are made of glass and they will smash. So this little design is really handy. I kind of pop it in front of the tank that I'm checking um, and then I use it just to sit my test tubes in like this, which is what it's designed for. They're all 3D printed to obviously fit the job at hand. And what the extra little bonus with this is, after you've washed your tubes, 
you can pop them in upside down and they've got a little clever air hole in the bottom of them like that where they will drain out and dry without the need to be shaking the life out of them like I do. So you leave them like that for a little while and then come back in half an hour or so and the theory is your test tubes will be dry for another day. But I must say it's little things like this that do make a big difference because before this I was basically just lying these on top of my tank. Um, I was popping the water in and then laying them on top of the tank so I knew what was what whereas now I have these little, these little gadgets and gizmos that just make my life a little bit easier. So they're definitely worth the investment. They're fairly inexpensive and they make life a lot easier. So do consider buying little things like this it will definitely help you out. I'll leave all the relevant information about this guy called Sam3D, that's his company. And um, you can have a little bit of a look at what he does. He does all different sorts of things, but take a little look. I'll leave the information below in the description. That's pretty much it for that. I don't know why I always do this. And that's it. <laughs> that's so aggressive. And that's it for this week. <laughs> And that's it for this week's video. Thank you all so much for stopping by and checking out this week's content. I hope you enjoyed it. I just want to get back on the, um, I like the style of videos that I'm doing just recently. I like the vlogs, I like the freedom, I like the connectivity with my audience. I love all of that. But I wanna give really good advice. If you ever find a little trick that I think will help you guys in regards to keeping your apps lots, I'm absolutely gonna share it. So little things like this are things that slip your mind. I've probably missed a few things off, to be perfectly honest. There's probably more things out there that can make the hobby a little bit easier and a little bit less taxing on the old body. So I will definitely do more future videos like this. But I hope you enjoyed it. So thank you very much for stopping by and checking it out. Now, if you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like button. It just lets me know that you enjoy the content that I'm producing. Also hit the subscribe button because it'll help you keep you in the loop when I upload again. And also ding the notification bell. And until next time, ta-ta for now. I would just like to say a huge thank you to my Frankie Lottles, the amazing people that go and support me over on Patreon. Now, if you'd like to get yourself involved, you will find all the relevant information you'll need directly below. I don't want to tidy up. I don't want to tidy up.